In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel passages are closely linked one to another. Since they are full of life, and since by means of these Gospel passages, we hear the Word of God, who speaks directly to us Christians. And blessed are we whose ears hear those words. And blessed are we when these words enter deeply into our hearts so that we can finally connect with our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ with the Word of God. And last week we heard concerning the feeding of the multitude. There were 5,000 men besides women and children and the, the Lord commanded his disciples to give them to eat. And everything was done in an orderly fashion, considering that there were thousands of people. They sat down in companies, and the five loaves and the two fish, the two fish were distributed among them, and there were many remnants of this meal, which miraculously multiplied. The grace of God does multiply also in all the Christians who hear the word of God and who take of this nourishment, since man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the, word, out of the mouth of God. So this gospel passage now that we hear today takes place immediately after this miracle, for our Savior constrained his disciples to go to the other side, to meet him on the other side, while he would go up to a mountain. He would go up a mountain to pray. You know that our Savior teaches us things by example. And after working such miracles, and after all that noise, he needed to show us that we need some quiet time. And that quiet time is not just quiet time because psychologically we need a little bit of quiet, but it's quiet time which lifts us up the mountain. It brings us up to another level. There's a reason for the quiet. With the noise, we oftentimes, or all the time, have a harder time concentrating on ourselves and inside ourselves. So we are lifted up on high, especially during this blessed period where we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Transfiguration, wherein we hear in the hymnology of the Church, come, O ye faithful, let us be raised up on high so that we can behold him, the Master, transfigured, as each one could endure. As each one could endure, because our Lord gives us the freedom to make the decisions and the choices. And it depends on us how much we want to delve into the matter, how much we want to really enter into this, which if we had wisdom and knowledge, we would with great willingness enter deeper and deeper into the things of God, understanding that there's no other gift like this which the Lord has given to us, that is to be with him, to be in him, and for him to be in us. There's nothing like that. And for this reason, St. Isaac the Syrian says, if people in the world had this knowledge, this understanding, if they had true knowledge, there really wouldn't be any continuation in the world, because everyone would be running to monasteries in the caves of the earth and to the clefts of the rocks, and they would be giving their lives entirely to Christ for the sole purpose of being one with him. And yet we have sinned, and we see that even the disciples of Christ himself sinned. Oftentimes they lacked faith. Oftentimes they just weren't strong enough. And St. Macarius of Egypt says concerning the the apostles of Christ, he says they couldn't even work miracles every single time they wanted to because it says in scriptures that they, they healed many of the sick. It doesn't say in scriptures that they healed 
all of the sick. What is the reason for this? The reason is because every source of healing comes from the one God, and all things go according to his holy will. And St. Macarius continues and says, they would have wished to heal all the sick and raise all the dead, but it was not permitted. Everything according to God's will. The foolish man fights God's will. The foolish man thinks he thinks better than God. He thinks he knows better than God. And this is a great deal of presumption. This is a serious plani, a serious delusion. And man decides that he's going to reason with his little finite mind the great things of God or the things concerning himself or the things concerning another person. He's so presumptuous that he thinks that he has everybody figured out when he doesn't even have himself figured out. And he's not going to be able to figure these things out because we are called to work on ourselves. And what a great tool the devil has when he makes us concentrate on all the outward things and not on the inner things because that distracts us from the one thing needful. Our Savior goes up the mountain and he prays and he's far away from everybody, but he's the all-knowing God and he knows all things. And the disciples were following his command. They were obedient to him and they were on a boat in the sea and the sea was boisterous. Now there were a lot of waves and it was very noisy. They had just left this noisiness, but now they have to deal with their own personal noise. But then comes our Savior. Then comes our Savior, because, as we said, not even the apostles themselves could do anything without God. None of the saints could be anything without God. They were sanctified by God. There's a source of their sanctification. And he walks in the waters. And the disciples see him. And the holy apostle Peter is courageous at this time. At the time of the crucifixion, he wasn't exactly as courageous as he should have been. But he was courageous and he said, Master, if it's you, command that I also come. And so our Savior commanded him, come. And so St. Peter, wishing to go to Christ, walked on the waters. There's only one of two things which could happen at this point. He could actually walk on the waters, which would be a supernatural phenomenon, or he could sink in the waters, which is what would normally happen according to what we see and what we know and he was walking but then he had his ADD moment he got distracted and there was noise around him it was a boisterous sea the moment that he started sinking was the moment that he lost his attention it was the moment that he lost his attention, which was solely concentrated on Jesus Christ. But then at this point, there is, of course, a happy ending. Because our Lord, in his desire that all men be saved, tries to devise means for us to be saved. And again, that great ascetic Macarius of Egypt says, Man, know thy dignity. Know who you are. Do you realize that God wants your companionship forever? God is so great, God is so humble that he wants you to be his friend in paradise unto the ages. Do you understand, O oh man, what gift you have? Are you going to fail? in this endeavor. 
The foolish man has said in his heart, there is no God, and the foolish man doesn't even want to give God the chance. He is unreasonable because he doesn't realize the danger that he is in. But even if he were wise, he would say, well, I shouldn't take my chances. But instead of that, the darkened mind remains in that state, in the state of arrogance and presumption of great planning, thinking that he's got something which is beyond comprehension figured out. Now that is the epitome of foolishness. At that moment when Peter sinks, he says a prayer because he's calling out to the Master Jesus Christ. And he was desperate. He didn't just simply say, Lord, save me with his mouth. But he cried out with his whole heart, Oh, Lord, save me. Can you imagine the predicament he was in? How serious this could have been. He understood that his life was in danger. And this is what happens, my beloved Orthodox Christians, with every single one of us. There are times in this life when we find ourselves in really difficult circumstances. You see how the disciples themselves were in the ship. They had this protection. And we have the protection. We are in the church. But there are boisterous winds, and the sea is boisterous. And there are many distractions, and there are many enemies. And the demons don't sleep. The demons want us. They want to destroy us. And they want us to topple over and to fall into the sea. They want us to be drowned. But our Savior comes because he knows all things. We have to understand this now. He can see all things at the same time and understand it. And he's the only one that's the all-knowing. Peter wanted to be a little higher. He wanted to go directly to Christ. And we, Orthodox Christians, and especially monastics, are called to concentrate on, to focus on our Master Jesus Christ. We have asked him to deem us worthy to come unto him. And he tells us, come. And we can sink. And we can drown. And we can die. And we can lose our salvation. If we don't go to the source, God himself. If Peter didn't say, Lord, save me, he would not have been saved. So during these difficult times of our lives, when we lose concentration on Christ, which we definitely all have done and most likely will fall into this trap again, we will see a huge change in our lives when we cry out, Lord, save me. But not like the parrot, as they say, where here we are in church and we open our mouths and we say prayers because We've become accustomed to it. It's a system that we have. We read books and we read prayers and we chant things and we have a hard time connecting. That's very sad because especially for those who are sinking, these are the opportunities where we can cry out to the Lord, where he gives us audience, he, he gives us the opportunity to cry out unto him in such a great way that even in the holy services, these divine rituals which we perform for the sake of our salvation, we are able to cry out unto him. It's like going to the palace and having a, an official position where the king only can, the king himself can hear you but it goes beyond that. So what does the Christian do when he's faced with these difficult circumstances? What does he do when he starts sinking? He falls on his knees. 
he sheds some tears from his heart. And he cries out, O Lord, save me. Out of the depths of his heart, out of the depths of I cried unto thee, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice, as we hear in the Vesper service. And that is what we must also do, my beloved Orthodox Christians. Our Savior is making it easy for us. And if we have a hard time doing that because of the hardness of our hearts, because there would be really no other explanation for not falling on our knees and begging God for help and deliverance, but hardness of heart, then we must pray that our Lord soften our hearts and that the Holy Spirit himself will make intercession within us with groans which cannot be uttered, as the Holy Apostle says. For in this blessed process, where we fall on our knees and beg God to help us, remembering Peter, who was sinking in the waters, during this blessed process, we will discover ourselves and we will discover Christ. We will understand the greatness of his love for us because the one who is far from God cannot comprehend God's love for mankind. In fact, he becomes accustomed to blaming God for his own problems. So let us also be raised up on high. Let us go up the mountain to pray. Let us value our quiet time, not for the sake of being lazy, but for the sake of learning stillness. For silence can lead us to stillness, inner stillness, quiet, inner quiet. The person who is, has all of his demons when he has quiet time is very loud inside. It's probably worse for him. But we have to accustom ourselves to be raised up and to learn how to pray ourselves out of the difficult circumstances that we are faced with. And always keep in mind that the difficult circumstances that we are faced with oftentimes are not as bad as we think they are. So we ask for illumination and enlightenment to be able to see and to understand as we've said so many times, sin for what it is and to understand virtue for what it is and to put all things into perspective. Let us pray to have that knowledge which St. Isaac the Syrian talks about, where the Christians would all be setting their priorities straight, especially for those who have run to the monasteries to understand why and to understand the blessed call, the calling, the blessed life for which we've been called, to which we have been called to. And let us always pray that our Savior open up our ears to comprehend the proclamations of his holy gospel, to be wise stewards, and to complete this time in holiness, in righteousness, and in true religion. Let us learn how to fall on our knees in profound reverence and in humility, worshiping God, looking down to the earth from which we were taken so that we will be able to enter into ourselves and find the temple of the Holy Spirit which is deeply rooted in the heart of every baptized Orthodox Christian to whom be glory unto the ages of ages. Amen.